Okay, we're going to do our broader market update here. It is August 1st, about 10 p.m. So we have the you know first day of trading for the week, also the first day of the month uh, complete. So we do have a little bit of data on the monthly candle, starting to see how that's developing. We'll start with SPX. And I'll say, looking at the, the way the futures are trading right now, it does look like, so we so Monday was day 29. We had a slight high, higher high. And then we just chopped around all day. Very frustrating. It would have been very frustrating to trade this if you just kind of see the way this thing is just kind of oscillating. Uh, that said, the way the futures are trading suggests to me this is going to turn into a swing, a swing high. And so that level on SPX, I mean, will, you know, will probably be a gap down opening tomorrow is my guess. I'm not saying anything huge, um, but like to the low on this candle is 49.06. Or excuse me, 4096, not 4906. 4096. So that's the level that you wanna you wanna be watching for. Um, once we trade below that, that makes this candle a we a daily swing high. Similar to way this candle right became a swing high once we traded below that low. Now you can see this was a short pullback that was bought, and then we had a quick move up, and that's exactly it, right? We're gonna have to see. Do we get something like this or do we get something like this and then the recovery, right? This is a higher low, right? We, what we have here is a series of higher lows, right? This low, this low, and now do we get a higher low that holds above this one? So that becomes your like really big, so that's a low at 39.10. That's obviously a bit of distance from where we are here. Um, so I'm not saying we have to go that low. But we are probably starting the daily cycle decline again. Day 29, based on the way the futures are trading, will probably be our daily cycle high. We did not quite get back to here, which is definitely a little concerning. My expectation was that we would get to this level, right? Like maybe just get there and then start to pull back. And so that could still happen. There's there's absolutely nothing kind of set in stone. It's just the trajectory of the futures now is sort of suggesting that. At the same time, you have two catalysts that are coming up in the near term, Friday jobs report, and then next Tuesday, I believe it is, the 10th, uh, we have the CPI print. And so I have to imagine, that, that's next Wednesday, excuse me, at 8.30 a.m. So I have to imagine those two events are going to factor in here, the CPI print probably much so, more so than the, than the jobs number. But you want to start paying attention to those levels. I mentioned this in my weekly report take a look at the link in the description for those that prefer sort of written content I, I went through sort of an overview of how last week developed and what that meant we could look for for this week and i talked about how this straight trend definitely looks like we're going to get a pullback in the same way that this trend right it makes sense and i hope you're starting to see this if we trend like this for a while you imagine we're going to get a little a pullback in this case it was a little pullback now we have to see, is this going to be a little pullback or is it going to be one that breaks this low and starts a pattern of lower lows and lower highs? That's what we're watching for. So that's the daily picture. And if you think about the weekly picture, I'll just remind you, you know, this is a new weekly cycle. We have confirmation that the that low that we got on June 13th, or I should say the week of June 13th was our weekly cycle low on week 16. And so... That would make this weekly, the second daily cycle, right? So that this was our low, or excuse me, right? That would make this the first daily cycle, right? Right. So this is just still, still our first daily cycle. And so t this is week seven, still just not an inside week because we did kind of poke up a little bit, but still consolidating at the upper end of the range. And so we also have a pattern of lower, higher lows on the weekly chart, right? So this is your higher low. And so now, again, it's the same, that same kind of pattern. We're going to see how this plays on the on the weekly chart. And finally, the monthly chart. We want to see a trade above 41.85, which would give us a monthly swing low. We got that monthly uh, move for the Qs. It's reversed since then, uh, which is not surprising. You don't usually break through on the first try. But that's what we're going to be watching for to tell us we have a long-term sustainable bottom. And we won't know if it's sustainable for a while, obviously. Um, as we observe more price action, we'll know more. But it's still the case that 
we are likely descending into a three-year cycle low. That's 36 months. And so we probably still have a lot of wood to chop since this is actually the start of month 29. Because um, you're right. So July was month, uh, was month 28. Now, the alternative is that we could get an early long-term slash three-year cycle low, and this could have been it. That's why we we play the price action and we don't overly focus on timing bands because timing bands can be unreliable and price action is what drives things. And so we're going to watch for that. You know, if we can see if we can see that we're starting to see, you know, long term bottoming signals on a monthly chart, then, hey, maybe we got a long term cycle low that was earlier than we expected. It is what it is. And if anything, that will just probably mean more people chasing as more people are looking for downside. Not necessarily because of cycles, but just people tend to get more bearish as prices go lower. Um, so that's the S&P. We'll quickly look at the Qs. And so if I look at them, I'll go to that monthly chart as I talked about. Um, oh, yeah. So we actually still are above that 315 level. So that swing low level is actually 314.56. And so we closed at 315. Again, seeing what the futures are doing for the S&P, we probably get a similar move from the NASDAQ. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we lose this swing low. And then we'll have to see if we can recover it. That'll be that'll be that'll be the game. It's that 314, call it 315, 314.50, that kind of area that is really important. And today, same kind of picture, day 29 possible or actually this one might be day 30 let me just check really quickly yeah so this is day 30 same kind of idea maybe getting our daily cycle top here but it's i, I again i just reiterate it's not something to panic about we could still see upside for the queues we could still see upside to 372 maybe even i mean that would be aggressive uh but like we have to see, does this hold a higher low? In this case, we really need to hold above 293. I mean, not saying we'll even get that low, but once we get past that level, we're no longer making higher lows anymore. I mean, you can see this thing has gotten steep, sort of the trajectory, and so it needed to correct anyway, at least back to the 10 period moving average <clears throat> is what you'll kind of look for at a minimum. And, and similar to the S&P, um, we are in a new cycle. It is week seven. In this case, the last cycle was super short at just 13 weeks, but it was also really steep drawdown, right? So like we came down, where did we come down? Right, so we came down 27% during the declining phase, 28% during the declining phase. So that makes sense to me, right? It's like sometimes the magnitude of the decline can make up for the briefness of it, right? So you decline by so much that you get a bottom sooner because, you know, the selling just exhausts itself almost in this case. Doesn't mean the lows are in, doesn't mean we don't get another leg lower, but for now we are in a new weekly cycle. It sucks that we're just now getting the more definitive confirmation on week seven because we had this like chop here because we had this swing low, right? Like from this week, but then we had this like choppiness where like, oh, are we going lower? No, we're not going lower. Oh, like, these four weeks of just like sitting around here really ate up a lot of time because that's the other piece. We're already on week seven of a new weekly cycle. So like it's not super early. So it's and ironically, you know, the cycle before this one, the one that started this whole topping process actually topped out on week seven. That was just a coincidence, but it'll be interesting to kind of watch that. And same same picture as the S&P. You know, very likely we have a three-year cycle top. In this case, it topped a couple months early. And that's the same story for IWM. Topped on month 20. Um, IWM is flirting with a monthly swing low as well. Um, so for IWM, the level to clear is really in that 191 range. So still three or four bucks away to kind of clear off this consolidation. But again, like we could be in the process of making a, some major... like. We could be in the process of putting behind us a major low. That's the thing. You won't know for sure that it's a major low until you get more of that confirm, like, you know, confirming evidence on higher time frames. 
which by definition takes longer to get, right? It takes longer, like to get a monthly signal, you need a monthly candle to essentially close. Obviously, as it's forming, we can start to get clues and that's where the multi time frame analysis comes in. But this is going to put us in a very interesting spot. Um, and for, yeah, for, for Q's and IWM, they're about the same count, day 30. So again, we're probably going to get a daily cycle low decline pretty soon here. We want to watch for that because that could be viable. It could resolve in a higher low that we can buy and ride at least this next leg up.